Ooh. Despite my channel being a family-friendly channel with content suitable for all ages, this Let's Play series of Ghost Trick Phantom Detective has been rated T for Teen due to it featuring mild language and mild violence. So viewer discretion is advised for this Let's Play series. Welcome back to Ghost Trick Phantom Detective, everybody. We are on Chapter 5 today. Stuff's yeah. getting a bit interesting now. I'd like to well, just, just remind just everybody bit. that I'm technically the one playing this game, and so far, I haven't completely sucked. I mean, you you let Lynn die from the hitman. Eh, it's fine. Anyhow, it's eight forty four p.m. Time oh wow, I forgot the first few chapters are only like a f it's like in the span of an apart. hour. Yeah, it's yeah. really short. Okay, it's eight. Let's start chapter five. When Lynn lost her life for the second time, she was being detained on suspicion of my murder, but I saved her, hoping to solve my own mystery. Living creatures can choose to live their lives in one of two ways. They can either submit to their fate, or they can try to change it. Lynn is definitely in the second camp. As soon as I got back to the junkyard superintendent's office, this fact was really brought home to me. What's she doing now? Oh, Phoenix Wrong! My favorite! Fool! We told you not to let the suspect out of your sight! My apologies, sir, but I never thought she would run away! Lynn is our angel! I mean, friend! I mean, she's like family to us! Angel, friend, or family, they all run when they have the chance! Do you have any idea how many years it's been since my wife ran away? I'm very sorry, I have no idea, sir. Humph, you'll never make detective at that rate. Now find Lynn! I just realized yes, that sir. the voice that you gave Phoenix wrong is basically like Gumshoe's voice. Oh, I tried to make it like his canon voice as of the 3DS games. Oh! <laughs> if Inspector Cabanella gets word of this, it's all over! Gumshoe, yeah, Gumshoe's got a little bit of the raspiness now. Yeah, pals. he does. <laughs> so our redheaded detective escaped, did, did she? But I just barely saved her a few minutes ago. Whoa, she's fast. Well, guess I'll look around for leads. Cool! Trick time. Wait, oh, I there love might this be a song so much. Up. Oh, there's not. Okay. Turn on the dust clamp, swivel. Close the spout lid! My favorite! <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> Maybe we can actually examine this now. Lynn's notebook, sad and forgotten, sits behind the bookshelves. Who could have been calling on the phone before she hid it there? I wish I could find out. Is there not a way to, like, move it? We can nope. move, we can hit the motor, we can go into, down below and do nothing. Um... We can move the stepladder. It is a stepladder. It is, of course it's a stepladder. trick a shot Oh Ooh. wait, there's no top bubble. Talk bubble. Battle Pigeon Man! Do you suppose he's carrying out some sort of research here? Look at all of his precision instruments and complicated devices! What are you doing? Sir, I think maybe this is how Lynn escaped! Through here! What is this? Like, Star Wars? <laughs> the garbage chute. The garbage chute? She couldn't possibly fit in that tiny little elevator! Oh, I don't know, sir. Lynn is pretty slim. Fool! Don't you know that women can make themselves appear slim through fashion?! To this day, I still don't know how much my wife really weighs. <laughs> I'm very sorry. I had no idea, <laughs> sir. Huh, you'll never make detective at that rate. Poor guy. Anyway, where's that old pigeon man? Oh, him, sir? He went through the door behind me, sir. Okay, if you say so. That's not the pigeon oh, man. Oh, that's not the pigeon <laughs> That's the, uh, the, oh, oh, the, uh, the yeah, autopsy the guy with the pigeon doctor. In his hair. It, won't, it won't open. Apparently that door leads to the basement, but it's currently locked, sir. That's dumb. These instruments, they're all very suspicious. You'd better keep your eye on that old man, too. Yes, sir! Trick time. I have no idea what this instrument is for. As a matter of fact, this whole desk is filled with things I've never seen. I know I've lost my memory, but still. That old pigeon man seems like a pretty strange guy. These photos look pretty old. Pictures of little fragments of rock. That old pigeon guy has some pretty strange taste <laughs> in wall decor. Yeah. And we can't go anywhere else. Oh no. 
since we're doing the step ladder again. Nobody cares or notices. <laughs> he noticed. <laughs> Wait, maybe there will be a thought bubble. Yeah, maybe. Why did would that make him move? Because he saw a step ladder move all by itself. Should I swivel it or should I turn on the lamp? I don't know. I could swear I just saw this fiend move. Don't tell me. Could it be? It sensed the tension between me and the detective and moved to get away from it? That was an unexpected tangent. I'll never make detective at this rate. What I need is some sort of an achievement, a feather in my cap. If only I could find a helpful lead, that might do the trick. A helpful and blindingly obvious lead is staring you in the face right now. Very... yep, very good. Huh? This is Lynn's notebook! If I give this back to her, it might spark something between us. <laughs> uh, what to do, what to do. This is a very complicated matter. I guess Lynn's single. Yeah, apparently. Or single enough. <laughs> for She's people. casually dating, but it's not gonna last. <laughs> what have we got there? What, this? Oh, uh, this is, um... Wait a minute, is that... Yes, sir. It's Lynn's notebook. Notebook, eh? Come to think of it, there was something about that in the report. Something about her looking at her notebook and making a phone call. This must be it. This telephone number with the big circle around it. Aren't you curious to know who she was calling? The chicken kitchen. I am. I really am, sir. I'd like to know. Oh! But I don't have any ulterior motive for wanting to know, though. No, sir. No, sir. This number might be an important lead. I'd better check it out. Okay. Oh, we could dial the phone. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Eavesdrop on the conversation. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> one of the funny things, Trick time. I was talking to one of my friends the other day, who I guess had heard of Phoenix Wright, I didn't realize he had. And I told him, actually, if he, um, oh, I didn't want everything crazy to happen. <laughs> Uh, you can finish. Oh, um, I, I told him, like, if you wore glasses, and then, like, but if they were, pa like, painted white, he could look like Winston Payne. <laughs> He's like, wow! <laughs> Hello? To whom am I speaking, please? Yes! Oh, oh wait, hang on. Um, uh, yes! Hello? This is a criminal investigation. We need your cooperation. Hey, I know that voice. Is that you, Detective McCaw? Oh, is that Officer Bailey? What's up, sir? You, you don't usually call this late. Oh, uh, did you get a call from one of our detectives, Lynn, earlier? From Lynn? Yes, I did. She calls every night. Maybe she senses it's <laughs> about to happen. Did she say anything special? No, not really. Is something wrong? Yes, well, <clears throat> I might be contacting you again if I have any other questions. No! We needed that! Oh, no, wait, it's, it's present time. We can... Yeah, trace complete. You got a new phone number, KMR2675. The kitchen. The chicken kitchen. I'm going to file the report down at the station. I need you to be vigilant here. Excuse me, Detective, but... What is it? Th that notebook. Would you mind if I gave... Uh, never mind, sir. Humph, just stay on your toes. Sad that Winston Payne's counterpart is the competent one over here. Yeah. Trick time! Alright, where to go to now? I mean, we have to go there. It's Otherwise, true. well, let's <laughs> see what else is happening around. I don't think there's really anything else happening. Oh, but the lady's apartment with the Yeah, luxurious. we went there last time and nothing's happening. Oh, we can go to the junkyard. Ray might have something to say. Okay. Whoosh. Ray usually gets new dialogue every chapter. Okay. Oh, back again? Yeah, just checking out to see if anything's new. Well, let me see. A moment ago, your corpse was taken away by the police. It was? Oh. I guess I'll never see my poor corpse again. Nothing is permanent. We lose everything in the end. But there are some things we can get back. Right, Ray? I suppose you are right. Trick time. So now I don't think we can actually go anywhere in the junkyard because we had to use the corpse to bounce around. Here's the thing that I'm curious about. 
-hmm. Ray can move around and is a lamp thing, like the Pixar lamp. Yeah. But is that because he's always possessing that lamp thing as his spirit? Or is it because, like... That's how he chooses to show himself. How is it we can't show ourselves, then, if that's the case? No, no, he is he is currently possessing a desk lamp. That is true. Okay, okay. But, the, but even if he moved to something else, he would still look like a desk lamp in his portrait. Oh, Because okay. that's how he's choosing to show his portrait. Okay. Kind of like how Lynn chose to become Inspector Cabanella for, like, that one, like, five seconds. Hey. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. Oh, yes, I love this part. Oh, well, they've got huge keys. <laughs> What was that call all about? I heard you say Lynn. I don't really know. If I had to take a guess, though, I would probably say something's going on with her. <laughs> the only place in the world where nothing is going on is, is inside your head, or inside your brain, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? I mean, I know what the words mean. That's not what I'm asking. It was my way of expressing indignation, putting it in the form of a question. <laughs> I just hope Lynn's not doing anything crazy. I'm a fan of hers, you know. According to my log, Lynn has been calling here nearly every night as of late. So let's see. This is the place Lynn took the, all that risk to call, eh? But what exactly is this place? Trick time. These weirdos. <laughs> He's possessing something. We can't move. No, we can't. Maybe we should wait for a little bit and see what happens. Nope, we're still on the phone. Now we have something new. The <laughs> memo, let loose. <laughs> wait, I'm gonna examine the monitor first. Okay. The screen shows rows of tiny rooms. The rooms are really, really small, and you can see right into them from the outside. I suppose the open bars keep the rooms airy, but I wouldn't want to oh, live in one myself. Oh, must be jail. I wonder where these little rooms are. Well, I mean, they are policemen, so that does make sense. We. Hey, what's this? Oh, that? I wrote down my duties for the night, so I wouldn't forget any of them. You can't keep them in your head? It's not like you have a ton of duties, after all. Use a little brain power. <laughs> wow. What are you talking about? Weren't you the one who just said there was nothing on inside my brain? Hmm, didn't think you'd take it in quite that direction. So let's see this important to-do list of yours. Nine o'clock, take prisoner C-38 to the telephone room. Yes, he just made a re request to use the phone a little while ago. Nine o'clock, eh? That's when Lynn usually calls. I must be calling someone in Well, we can't let her talk to him tonight. Rules are rules. Aw, oh, poor Lynn. Sure wish I could comfort her. What? <laughs> Well, what do you think you're doing? That's my important duties memo! That's okay, I got it all memorized for you. W well it's your duty to guard the telephone room, you know! Just make sure you do your job when the time comes. Oh, uh, okay. Ring, ring. Who's calling? Lynn? Hello? Lynn! I'm sorry, I don't have much time. Please let me talk to him. Well, I'm sorry, Detective. I can't do that tonight. You can't? But you've always let me talk to him before. Well, uh, the telephone room is already reserved. That's why. Oh. By the way, is something going on with you tonight? What? Why do you ask? I got a call from one of the other detectives a minute ago asking about you. Oh, really? Well, I don't think it's anything important. Officer Bailey, do you think you could keep this call just between us? Even if only for tonight? Well, I, uh... Oh! Well, I've gotta go. I'll call again tomorrow. Trace complete. Where was New that? New phone number, MHR4481. 
Oh boy. Well, I guess I better call the detective division. Hold on there, Bailey. What? Don't tell me you're gonna report that call from Lynn. What else can I do? It's my duty. Just write it down on one of your important to-do lists. And then I can wad it up for you and throw it away. You mean, you want me to keep quiet about it? Well, isn't that what she asked you to do? You have the craziest ears. Uh, yes, well, but yes, but... Tonight is kind of a special case for us. Can't you make a special exception for my Lynn, too? Uh, special case, huh? Alright, you win. That detective is <laughs> sitting the wrong way in the chair. He's got that, like, the back between his crotch. Yeah, like, no, he's sitting, he's sitting like a weirdo. Time. He's just shuffling cards. He doesn't have anything to do. I don't know what they think is special about tonight, but for me, it's my only night. Lynn is on the other end of that telephone line. I better hurry. <laughs> Wait, actually, go back. Oh yeah, we've got tons of stuff here. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm Sissel. That's Lynn. That's Ray. That's Gigo. That's uh the, the, him. Tango, the little lady. Missile. The perfumed lady. Feverish firecracker. The careworn gentleman. The green detective. The blue detective. The odd blue doctor. Owen Wilson. The lanky and loose lawman. Detective with the cap. He works under Inspector Cabanella. He's performing a stakeout from the park. An odd man seems to be bothering him. Guardian of the park. There's no way, other way to describe him except the man who is bothering the detective with the cap. His mission is apparently to protect the park. Protect the park! Quickly! Pigeon Man, the superintendent of the junkyard. He apparently also lives in the maintenance building. A man who loves and is loved by his pet pigeon, or at least that's how it appears to be. Yeah, if he jumped out of Harry Potter, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> The jovial tenor. Most likely he's the chef of the restaurant, the Chicken Kitchen, a.k.a. Chick-fil-A. Typical cop. I guess he's one of the policemen investigating my murder. There are so many of them, and I can't tell them apart. The Navy Blue Square. He sits at the desk in some office and appears to be working. These guys all wear the same uniform. I can't tell them apart. <laughs> You're gonna have to use the phone. Oh, that's right. Yeah, now yeah, I Yeah, Artie that. just told me before we started recording, he's like, I remember all the places and stuff, I just don't remember how everything links up. Oh, she's dead. Is she dead? Or is she really sleeping? She's probably dead. When in doubt with this game, you're dead. Lynn! Lynn! Oh, why couldn't it have been me instead? I have no use as a police officer. It should have been me. It looks like she's dead. We better not touch her. Who did this? Who shot Lynn? For like the fifth time tonight. Why is she wanted so much? Uh, hey, excuse me, mister. Mr. You talking to me? Mr. Pigeon? Ugh. This room. There aren't any other exits besides this one, are there? Do you see one? Yeah. Actually, I do. Huh? Then how did... We must have... We must have one of those mysterious locked room murder cases on our hands. One of those cases where the murderer vanishes into thin air in a vacuum. Just go find a real detective. I'll keep watch here. Yes, sir. <sighs> okay, then. Ah, <sighs> what a terrible turn of events. So now a locked room murder, eh? Fiends never get dull for our redhead. I know of a certain inspector who might dance around at the thought of a mystery. But no mysteries for me. Not when I can rewind time and talk to the victim herself. Guess it's time to go back and see the truth behind this murder with my own eyes. Trick time! <laughs> I died again! I thought you'd be a little more grave under the circumstances. Yeah, well, this is the third time after all. It's scary when a, what a girl can get used to, don't you think? Frankly, the way her mind works is a whole heck of a lot scarier to me. So what happened this time? Who shot you? I don't know. What? I'd like to know myself. Who could have done it? Who shot me?! What are you asking me for?! Oh boy, I guess I'll just have to go and find out for myself. Okay, you just go do that. Hurry along now. 
I get the distinct impression I'm being used here. Okay, looks like it's time to go back. Back to four minutes before your death. Whoosh. I like how she's approaching it like a video game. Yeah. Four minutes before death in the basement of the maintenance building. How long has it been since I locked this room up in darkness? I once thought the truth could be discovered in darkness. Maybe that was just that the time wasn't ripe. Nice. Wow, Dane Lynn. Lynn is like Samus up in here. Yeah, I know. She's good. He's also got a You're good way of down the stairs. Can Lynn breathe in there? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Well, that's cool. We can intercept phone calls when that's happening. Yep. He hung up. Oh, it's up there. He put the kettle on. <laughs> the kettle's been on for a few minutes now. Now he walks back up the stairs really slowly. He's an old man. It's hard for him, okay? Sure. <laughs> Yeah, he can still slide down the railing, no problem. Go in the room. It's so dark. What? Is this like a science experiment gone wrong and then it like hits her in the head? Perhaps. So it's like everything's in flames and then she just... That's the truth behind our locked room murder? So the murderer was a mechanical murder machine? Murder machine? When I came into the room, it was pitch black, so I turned on the pitch dark. <laughs> that must have been what set it off. The murder machine, I mean. Can you please stop repeating the words murder machine? That old pigeon guy must have made it, but why? What could be the meaning behind this weird room? Anyway, you have to find some way to stop that creepy machine. Once Cupid fires his arrow, it's all over. If memory serves, this is relatively simple to stop. Trick time. Well, you're in there. Now we're up here and we look down there. Uh, we'll I have to wait for the pigeon man to come close with his lantern. Pigeons. You know what, Sissel? I think this death might be easier to prevent than the others. Why is that? You know, because the murder's mechanical. She has a point. I can't manipulate living creatures. But I can manipulate this machine. Now I just gotta figure out how to stop it. When the four minutes ago, me turned on its light. That's when the murder machine is set in motion, apparently. It looks like the key to solving this one is understanding this Rube Goldberg machine. You remember what that is, Sissel, but you don't remember, like, other stuff? How long has it been since I locked this up? Uh, answer me, pigeon. <laughs> Woo! Oh yeah, I already see how it's done. So you're just gonna hang out at the phone, wait till... Yep. It's a hop! Whoosh! How did you manage to cram yourself into that tiny elevator? like small cramped places. Whenever I see a little hole or crevice, I always feel like crawling in. The place I feel most at home is that space between my bed and the wall. Yeah, I guess I can understand that. Oh, we're birds of a feather. We should get together and talk about it sometime. <laughs> That's funny, because I know so many people who hate it. Claustrophobia is not a thing for Lynn. Thank goodness, she's a detective. Oh. This telephone isn't working! <laughs> Sissel, you know this by now. We've tried it like five times now. But it's ringing. Whoosh. That's why I was like... No, but it's not until they pick it up. Oh. Time's passing. Oh, um, is this the superintendent? I'm so glad. I thought I was all alone. Go there, stay here. There's no reason to go there, but... We can't I do anything if we stay here, though. 
Yeah, I kind of really want to go there. We're literally going like two seconds up. Manipulate that kettle. He hung up! Trick time! It's all over. It's all over for me! Lin, sweet, cute Lin, who shines as bright as the sun, ran away on me. And then those detectives, matching bookends blue and green, yelled at me. And then the old man with the dirty blue dove on his head completely ignored me. If only somebody would give me a kind word right about now. You want to give him a kind word, Miss Bright as the Sun? Um, let's see. Hang in there! That's all you've got? <laughs> I'd like to see you do better. Close spout lid. Lynn ran away, the detective yelled at me, the old pigeon man ignored me, and then this kettle nearly scared me to death. My life is in complete shambles! That's gratitude for you, we were just trying to warn him with the kettle whistle. Would he have preferred getting scalded by the steam? Well, at least his fate was changed a bit. That's good anyway. Fate changed, technically. <laughs> Very good. You just have to wait in here. That didn't take too long. Yeah, that was pretty simple. Uh. Because remember, the ball's on the, the fan and it's gonna move around. Right. And roll outwards, so we'll be able to move. There it goes! The murder machine started! And if the whole thing plays out, that gun on the wall will go off. But before that happens, it's up to me to use my ghost tricks. There must be some way to disrupt this domino effect. You just have to find it. Here goes. Wait, I want to be on the ball, don't I? Move that? You can move the hoist, so that would probably move over there. Remember, we got a fate change right before this, so... I just have reach. Interesting. Did that stop it? Nope. Why wouldn't it have stopped Okay, so it? this is a little trickier than I expected. I think we've screwed up now. That's fine. We can go back to the fate change. I like how they I put the checkpoints in. Yeah. It, it is timing and also just knowing the order of things to do. <laughs> That was kind of a strange walk. It's like a tiptoeing into darkness thing. Um. We already saw the buckle. Loop. So let's open the toolbox earlier. Oh. Yeah, it is timing. I think you've got to time it so the shovel will hit the ball when it swings, and then the ball will go flying. Yeah. Whoop! Yeah, that's that's hard timing. It is. You know what's harder timing? Playing Metroid Prime. <laughs> I started doing that, and Metroid it's Prime's like, a great game. It is one and of the best Metroid yeah, games. Yeah, one of our brothers is obsessed with the series. Um, so he was really happy. I, I messaged him, like, I'm in, like, the Chozo temple or whatever. But... Okay. Going down here. So wait. Uh, yeah, so go back and wait for a bit before the On the ball. No, wait on the toolbox. Try now. Wow, that ball moved slowly. I guess wait till it starts falling off the table. Okay. <laughs> Thank God we can do this like infinite a number of times. Yeah, otherwise it's like Sissel, you suck. Sorry. <laughs> well, I thought it'd be at least like Mario where you have lives. No, that would get really annoying.
too late that time. Oh. Hit was pretty good just now. Maybe if we were on a putting green. Well, with a swing like that, maybe we could put it to some use here. Good thinking. I just might be able to use this trick somehow. If I could change the path the ball takes. That's great and all, but it looks like we're out all out of time this round. Okay, so that's actually not all what you have to do. Yeah, we have to... Maybe move the hoist? We have to move the hoist, but also we have to make that trap door open and get rid of the ball, I think. Oh, if we can do that, then yeah. Because there's a... I can't move. In this no, that's fine. But there's... See how there's a trap door down there? I think yeah. that would be the key. But I don't know how to get to it. Right. I'm going to make a safe state here. Okay. Just so we don't have to keep repeating that earlier part. Boom, boom. Oh, we could follow them. Well, seriously, sometimes it's just a matter of pixels. It's okay. dumb that once you open the toolbox, it forces you to watch the movie and you can't change what you're possessing. I've got a better idea. Okay. <laughs> See, I know the, what at, in the end what you have to do. I just can't figure out how to reach that place. Try staying on the ball. Aha. Examine? I guess that's the only thing we can do. We can't go through the trap door. We can! Cool. Now, oh yeah, there we go. Yep, yep, yep. No, 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 no. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Because when the ball falls off the table, that's when you have to swing. So wait till the ball gotcha. starts falling. Gotcha. Yeah. Too late. No, not too late. Okay! <laughs> what just happened? Looks like your future just got a lot, a whole lot rosier. Your death has been erased. Again. I, uh, thank you. You kept your promise, didn't you, Cecil? My promise? You said I'd see you again if I died. I don't remember making any promises. It's all for my own benefit, anyway. Fate averted! Yeah. What could this room be all about? Hmm, I can't imagine. Those things that went off at the end, those were party poppers, weren't they? Party poppers? I have no recollection of what they are, but that's no surprise. The party poppers, the gun going off, it seems familiar somehow. I'll leave that part of the puzzle to you. I have my own puzzle to figure out. Well, shall we go back now? Back to your new present? I thought you had to physically manipulate the Cupid statue to turn it. Oh. Sissel, are you there? Lynn is talking to me? If you're there, could you say something? If you're not there, I guess I'm just a weird girl who talks to herself! Well, you are kind of a weird girl, whether you talk to yourself or not. Trick time! So we have to, like, prove that she's there? Oh. You are here! I knew it! I just had that feeling. Shame on you for stepping foot into a girl's head uninvited. Wait a minute. Don't give me that a ghost doesn't have feet bit. It's just a figure of speech. Hey, did I say anything? There! That tone! It's that tone of yours that makes me mad. So, did you have something particular you wanted to say to me? I just thought I'd share some information with you. I'm investigating a case right now. A murder case, and I'm doing it alone. A murder case? All by yourself? Yes, well, that's because the case was closed a long time ago, but the Statue of Limitations is... Blah blah blah, it's about Edgeworth! If it was about- if it was that case, I would laugh my head off. The culprit's already behind bars, forgotten by the world. So why are you looking into it, then? Because I think the person's innocent, that's why! 
There's something strange behind the case. Some big mystery. I firmly believe that. So, anyway, I finally have my memory back. I'm not at liberty to tell you about the case. But if there's anything else you want to know, I can try to answer what I can. Lynn is my only lead. I would like to ask her about a few things. About the one who shot me. Yes. Girl with the bow. By the way, I see you have a little roommate. Camilla? How do you know about her? There was a tiny incident at your apartment a little while ago. An incident? What kind of innocent? Or incident? What happened? Is Camilla alright? She's fine, thanks to her loyal little friend, Missile. Although I did have to bring, have a little trouble bringing him back to life. Oh my... What in the world is going on? Why would anybody want to hurt Camilla and Missile? You're being targeted by a certain organization. What? I, I saw them. The people who are calling you their target. So I'm a suspect and a target? Could this night possibly get any worse? It does sound pretty rough. Are you sure you'll be okay on your own? Huh? You know what they say, when it rains, it pours. Isn't it time you admitted you need me? Need my powers? I'm sorry. I can't cooperate with you. Yes, you saved my life tonight. I'm completely grateful for that. But as a detective, I still can't trust you. That's too bad. Well, that's all I want to talk about. <laughs> you have your life and your memory back now. So let me ask you again, who shot me tonight? Yeah, I thought that might be the first thing on your mind. Even though it was the <laughs> second thing on your mind. Yeah, you always do the second option first. Because I'm always more interested in the second option. What else would it be? There's a good chance I was shot while I was with you after all. I'm afraid my memory just isn't clear on that part. Not clear? I met with you tonight, and then you fell down right in front of me. I think I remember seeing that part. I'm pretty sure you were shot. Maybe from somewhere far away? So you didn't see the culprit? I'm sorry, I wish I could be of more help. But I know I wasn't the one who shot you. Your colleagues seem to think you're a suspect, though. I wanted that information you had for me. So why would I shoot you before I got it? Information, huh? I wonder what info I had for her. So I had some important information that you wanted, huh? That's right, you called at the station yesterday. And you asked to talk with me. You told me that you had an important lead on the case I was working on. Important lead, eh? You said you wanted to meet me and talk to me directly, tonight at the junkyard. And you fell for it? Even given how fishy it sounds? You're the last person I want to hear that from, you know. But I just couldn't let it go, no matter how shady it seemed. That's because I'm running out of time. Hey, that's right. You said something was going down tonight. Does that something have to do with the case you're working on? I'm sorry, but I can't talk about it. I'm guessing Statue of Libertations. Libertations, yep. Libertations. Oh boy. But I guess I understand. So what are you going to do now? Run, I guess. They'll catch me again if I don't get out of here. And I have to get to the restaurant. I'm worried about Camilla. Oh yeah, what was it? The chicken kitchen on Dead End Drive, right? What about you, Sissel? What are you going to do? I don't know to tell you the truth. You're my only lead, if you leave. I just realized, you and I are in the same boat. We're both looking for answers tonight, and neither one of us has anybody else to help us. That about sums it up. Hey, even if we can't, even if you can't cooperate with me, how about if we just agree to use each other? That's not a bad idea. You're on. But can I ask you to do a favor for me first? What's that? I need you to sneak into a certain place for me. A uh, prison, to be exact. Prison. That's the place I was calling from the ups uh, from the op office upstairs. I want you to go find out a certain prisoner's work schedule for tomorrow. Work schedule? For a prisoner? Yes, the prisoners are given different job details every day. Every prisoner's schedule is on the ne for the next day is written on a small blackboard in his cell. So just go check out a certain prisoner's blackboard, huh? Okay. 
His prison number is D99. If you do that for me, I'll cooperate with you. Okay, you're on. Okay, see you later. See you. But don't die again, if you can help it. She immediately dies. Oh, that's where it leads. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> Looks like I hold the key to the case Lynn is investigating, and she holds the key to solving the mystery of me. So we've started up a strange relationship of cooperation. Lynn gave me an assignment. My task is to go check out tomorrow's work schedule for prisoner D99. I'd better get to the prison. Alright, chapter 5 down. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, this is where the game, well, I feel like every chapter I'm going to be like, this is where the game starts getting good, but this game is pretty consistently great throughout the entire thing, with maybe one chapter exception, which is kind of annoying. Okay. Anyhow, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next time. We're going to be busting into a prison, I guess. Yeah. Look forward to that. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.